Hi, this is Barry Brooksby, co-founder of Optic Financial. Today we'll be looking at a comparison between the result of a person buying term insurance and investing the difference versus allocating those dollars to a permanent whole life insurance policy. What I'm starting first with is a 35 year old male having a $500,000 whole life insurance policy. And you'll notice that for the first four years of the policy, they're investing $15,000 and $5,700 thereafter. The internal rate of return on this policy, minus taxes, minus fees, is 4.32%, which is a great rate of return. Where today can you get a guaranteed liquid rate of return of 4.32%. It's June 2013 and today frankly it isn't possible. I looked at CD rates yesterday. The best I could find was 1.83% if you locked your money away into a CD for five years. Keeping in mind that you'd still have to pay tax on that 1.83%. So a 4.32% rate of return is fantastic. Now, because this person is buying term and investing the difference, we have to take a look at the cost of the term insurance. Same $500,000 term insurance policy. It's a 30-year term policy that would project out to age 65. But you'll notice here at the start of age 65, this term insurance premium cost skyrockets, goes to 23,000 a year and then increases every year thereafter. So we're showing that this term is going to cancel at age 64, which by including the term insurance cost, you notice that the internal net rate of return now on the whole life permanent policy is 4.5 percent. Again, most typical financial planners are telling clients that once they hit this magical age of retirement, 65, that they're not going to need life insurance. They would have invested the difference, so they would have built up all these assets and have this large net worth when they're 65, which they're told they can now self-insure use the assets that they've created, get rid of their term insurance, they no longer need life insurance because they are now self-insured, which frankly is a myth, but that's for a different time. This $15,000 that is being invested in the market is going to earn a rate of return. If we look at the returns, had you invested these dollars in the market over the last 10 years, you would have earned a 2.6% rate of return following the Dow or a 4% rate of return following the S&P. But let's be a little generous here and show a 7% rate of return. This 7% means year in and year out a 7% rate of return without ever a down year, which isn't possible, we've never seen it, but we're going to be generous and go ahead and include a 7% rate of return on this $15,000 and the $5,700 thereafter. Keeping in mind that with this 7%, there's an increase. So taxes are going to have to be paid on this interest being earned. Let's say this person is in a 25% tax bracket. They have to pay their taxes. And in this column here, you see the annual taxes that are being paid. Because they're invested in the market, stocks, mutual funds, 401k, IRA, there's a management fee. Again, studies have shown that the management fee average for most of these type of qualified plans is about 4.5%. We'll be conservative and show a 2.5% management fee. So with the taxes in this column, the cost of term insurance in this column, 
and the management fees associated with the account, we have the end of year balance on this alternate account in this column here. Now what's interesting about this alternate account is that had these same dollars here been invested into a permanent whole life insurance policy, that alternate account would have had to have had a rate of return of 8.71% to match what the whole life is doing. So you can already see that the permanent life insurance is ahead the difference between the 8.71% and the 7% in the market. It's ahead by 1.71%. Let's look at this cash on cash comparison. So we notice with the typical financial planning philosophy of buy term insurance and invest the difference, it is true that in the short term for the first 12 years of investing, it would have made more sense to go with a 7% return in the market. Again, isn't possible, but using these numbers today, it would have been better putting that money in the market. However, from year 13 on, the permanent whole life insurance outperforms the alternate investment. And we see that reflected here in this column. And as time continues to go on, we see that the permanent whole life insurance dramatically outperforms the alternate account. Another interesting comparison here would be the death benefit comparison. Remember, the individual buying term and investing the difference cancels their term insurance at age 65 because of the cost or because of what they've been told from the financial planner that they won't need term insurance because they can now self-insure due to the amount of wealth they've created. But here we see the alternate account plus the term insurance. Here we have the death benefit of the whole life insurance and here's the difference between the two. We're showing that even in the first year the death benefit is better with the permanent whole life policy and we continue to see that it outperforms the alternate account dramatically. Notice here at age 65 there's a decrease in the death benefit because the term insurance goes away but the whole life policy continues to build cash value and death benefit. So as you look at this scenario, we've taken this individual out to the age of 85. There's a $789,000 difference in the death benefit and the cash on cash comparison, there is a $489,000 difference. As you consider what we've gone over today, buying term insurance and investing the difference versus allocating those dollars to a permanent whole life insurance policy, you can clearly see not only is the cash on cash benefit better, but you also get a death benefit on top of that. There are many, many other benefits of having a permanent whole life insurance policy as well. Today I've shared with you just a few. Visit us at www.opticfinancial.com for more information. Thank you.